In this video, I describe the 10 conditions common to all extensions built under permitted development. An extension is defined as the enlargement, improvement, or other alteration of a dwelling house, and so this video is relevant for side extensions, rear extensions, loft conversions, garage conversions, porches, and all types of outbuildings. This is video number two in a series of videos that started with video number one, considering eligibility for permitted development. It's recommended that you watch both videos one and two before watching any of the following videos. Number three, covering rear extensions. Number four, side extensions. Number five, loft conversions. And number six, outbuildings. Note that this video is not relevant to video number seven, additional stories. Here are the 10 conditions that apply to the extensions that you will see in videos three to six. First, the footprint limit. Next, overall height. Then, height of eaves. Frontage. Total enlargement, verandas and balconies, items specifically excluded, Article 23 land, external materials, and finally solid wall insulation. Now let's look at the detail. Condition 1 footprint limit of 50%. Extensions, including any extensions to the original house under Class A or under a separate planning permission, and other buildings must not exceed 50% of the curtilage. Curtilage is land within which the house sits, or to which it is attached, such as the garden. It's land which is used for the benefit of those living in the house, and includes driveways, lawns, vegetable patch, etc. Curtilage is unlikely to contain land that is separate, such as woodland or paddocks which are not considered part of the dwelling, even though they may be linked. In the case of properties with large grounds, the curtilage may be a smaller area, perhaps the area near the house cultivated as a garden. The maximum area that can be built on as permitted development is 50% of the green area as shown here, whether as an extension to the house under Class A, a roof conversion under Class B, or outbuildings erected under Class E. The 50% limit applies to all buildings, so will include existing and proposed outbuildings as well as any existing or proposed new extensions to a house. The original house is not included in the 50% allowance. Neither is any separate detached building if built together prior to 1948. The house is built after 1948, the 50% allowance includes separate detached buildings, even if built together. The 50% allowance always includes later extensions or any later separate detached buildings, irrespective of when they were built. Condition 2. Overall height. The extension must not exceed the height of the highest part of the roof of the existing house which is the height of the ridge line of the main roof, even though there may be other ridge lines at a lower level, or where roofs on a building are flat, the height of the highest flat roof. Vertical protrusions such as chimneys, firewalls, parapet walls are accounted for as follows. For the existing house, don't include the height of protrusions. For the new extension, do include their height. Condition 3. Height of eaves. The height of the eaves of the extension must not exceed the height of the eaves of the existing house. On the left, we see the side view of an extension with a pitched roof. The height of the eaves is measured from the ground level at the base of the external wall of the extension to the point where the external wall surface would theoretically meet the upper roof surface. Ground level is the surface of the ground immediately adjacent to the building in question and does not include anything above the ground such as decking. Parapet walls and overhanging parts of eaves are ignored in the calculation of eaves height. 
Where there is a flat roof, as shown on the right, we measure eaves height in the same way, measuring up to the theoretical junction of external wall surface and roof surface. Where the existing house has eaves of different heights, the level of the eaves for the extension is measured against the highest level of eaves on the existing house. Where a house is on sloping ground, the level of the eaves on the existing house is taken at the elevation from which an extension is attached. Condition 4. Limits on frontage. The enlarged part of the dwelling house cannot extend beyond a wall which forms the principal elevation of the original dwelling house or fronts a highway and forms a side elevation of the original dwelling house. Let's look at these three phrases in more detail. What does extend beyond a wall mean? It refers to both the area immediately in front of the wall plus the area in front of a line drawn from the end of the wall to the boundary of the property. Which of these extensions are allowed under PD? These two. How do you decide which is the principal elevation? Well, it usually means the front of the house. Often, this is indicated by the existence of prominent architectural features, such as bay windows or a porch serving the main entrance to the house. If the architectural features don't signal the principal elevation, it can usually be assumed to be that part of the house which fronts, directly or at an angle, the main highway serving the house. And the main highway is the one that sets the postcode for the house. Which of these extensions are allowed under PD? These two. Where there is an L-shaped house, the walls in the frontage form the principal elevation and the lines are drawn from these walls. Which of these extensions are allowed under PD? These two. There's only one principal elevation on a house. Where there's a corner plot, a view needs to be taken as to which of the elevations A or B is the principal elevation. You can then identify your rear elevation and this can be a critical decision. In this scenario, the option of adding a long rear extension under PD rules is only available if elevation B is established as the principal elevation. Bear in mind that you may need to agree the principal elevation with your local planning officer. While part one of the condition limits extensions past the principal elevation, part two of the condition limits extensions past the side elevation, but only if it fronts a highway. Which of these extensions are allowed under PD? This one. The extent to which a side elevation of a house fronts a highway is dependent on a couple of factors. One factor is the angle between a side elevation of the house and the highway. If that angle is more than 45 degrees, then the elevation is not normally considered to be fronting the highway. Which of these extensions are allowed under PD? These two. If the angle is less than 45 degrees, then the elevation is normally considered to be fronting the highway. Which of these extensions are allowed under PD? Just this one. The second factor determining whether a side elevation fronts a highway is the distance between the house and the highway. Where the distance is substantial, it is unlikely that a building can be said to front the highway. The same may be true where there is a significant area of third-party land between the house boundary and the highway. Condition 5. The total enlargement. Where the proposed extension is joined to an existing extension to the original house, the total enlargement must meet the limits set out for these specific types of extension. These limits are detailed in the later more focused videos. Condition 6. Veranda, Balcony and Raised Platform 
These structures, verandas, balconies and raised platforms are not allowed under PD rules. They are defined as follows. A veranda is a roofed open-air gallery attached to the outside of a building and often partly enclosed. A balcony is a platform with a balustrade projecting outside an upper story of a building. A Juliet balcony does not have a projecting platform and is therefore allowed under PD rules. A raised platform is any platform with a height greater than 0.3 metres and this includes roof terraces. Note that Class E of the PD rules allows garden decking provided it is not more than 0.3 metres high. We're about 80% through the video. If you're finding it useful, I'd appreciate a click on the thumbs up or subscribe button and please don't hesitate to ask a question or make a suggestion in the comments below. Condition 7. Items specifically excluded by Class A but covered in other classes. Where an extension to a house under Class A includes works that would require an alteration to the existing roof of the house, for example where the roof of the extension joins the existing roof, the alterations to the existing roof of the house will need to meet the requirements of Class B or C in order to be permitted development. Class B covers enlargement of houses through alterations or additions to the roof. Class C covers other alterations to the roof of a house. Class G covers work on a chimney, flue, soil pipe or vent pipe. And Class H covers work on a microwave antenna. Condition 8, Article 2.3 Land. This land category is explained in video number 1. Where a house is on Article 2.3 land, development is not permitted by Class A if A. It includes the cladding of any part of the exterior of the house. B. The enlargement extends beyond the side wall. Or C. The enlargement is a rear extension higher than single storey. Condition 9. Materials used in any exterior work. This condition aims to ensure that any works to enlarge, alter or improve a house results in an appearance that minimises visual impact and is sympathetic to existing development. This means that the materials used should be of similar visual appearance to those in the existing house. It does not mean that they need to be the same materials. The requirement for similar visual appearance does not apply to conservatories. Condition 10, solid wall insulation. The installation of solid wall insulation constitutes an improvement rather than an extension and is not therefore caught by any exclusions to cladding. That's it for this video. In the next one, video number three, I'll go through the rules for building rear extensions under permitted development. Thanks for watching.